Starting with the beginning of the Sefer Kedush. The Isha Niknis Bishleisha Drachim. And it says, if it casts a and Rashi says, Haisha Niknis, the very first Rashi in the Sefer Kedush, says, Lebaila to her husband. What would we have thought without Rashi? What do you mean, Isha Niknis? To who? So the Achrein shall give all kind of shatach. Uh, the one of the Shainim actually, the Ra, asks, What does Rashi want? And he says, You know what Rashi wants? Rashi wants the Bavor, and Rashi wants to tell us that even though this is Kedushin, it's not the Pshat that she's 100% considered up here, his wife. Lamashal, he doesn't yashin her yet, cannot be metameter if he's a Koyin. It's not totally his wife. But what, in what respect is it is considered his wife? In order to give a get. If they divorce, he has to give her a get. So Ishaniku is le baila. Only as far as le baila, as far as Gitan is concerned. That's what the Ra wants to chat in Rashi. In, in Pashtip Shad, it's a little bit difficult to understand because you learn the Rashi and you don't tell us anything about a get. I mean, how in the world are you supposed to understand from the word le baila that you're talking about not completely? But apart from that, what, what's difficult is the next Rashi. The Mishnah continues and says, Ha Yevama Niknis, the Yevama, this, you know, the sister-in-law, whose husband passed away and left no children, Ha Yevama Niknis, says Rashi, Liyavam. Now, the problem using the Raz Pshat is, because by a Yavam, when they do these Kinyanim, it's Taka 100% his wife. So what's it coming to, to say Liyavam? What does Rashi want? It needs an explanation. There are many hakiris about tradition, and I'll just go through some of them as we work our way through. When a person, a couple gets married, there's really two things happening here at the same time. One is there's a financial arrangement. There are his chayvson that the husband has to his wife. Sheeda, Susa, there are posh his chayvson that he has. And he has to redeem her and all the, 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 the things that are in to it, that a husband is mechuyi for his wife. And then, there's also the Arab side of it, the Isa side of it. But now they are together and she's also to the whole world. So what is actually happening when you do these Kinyonim of Kedushin? What are you doing this Kinyonim of Kedushin? Is it mainly the financial, these Kinyonim you're doing, is it mainly for the financial side and the Isa gets dragged along? Is it mainly the Isa or the Isa, that's what's happening when you do these Kinyonim and the, and the financial side gets dragged along? What's actually happening here? So you look in the to Gitten, because whatever Kedushan accomplishes, the get takes away. So right in the beginning of Sech to Gitten, the very first Amr, if you still remember it, the Mishnah says that you have a Shliach, it says and throw, you don't have a Shliach. And then it says in the end of the Mishnah, what happens if there are people, and the Gemara at the end concludes the pest that it's the... The husband, nobody else, it's the husband, because if it's two Aiden, it's favorite, right? It's the husband. The email of Aiden, sorry, email of Eder, Yiskayim Bechaisma. All you have to do is to verify the signatures on this, on this get. That's all you have to do. So the long taste is there on the bottom of the page as a whole discussion. Okay, that means because man, nobody came to complain, we do nothing. We accept the get as it is. What about Dini Mamnes, a star moment? What about financial contracts? A contract is brought to us, a star with two signatures on it. Do we just accept it or do we kind of and we force them to go ahead and to prove the veracity of the get of that star? Right? So you saw the, the taste of the whole, uh, and taste says that maybe it's different because here, maybe it's different. The Rajva and Avtes brings a Ri, and the words of the Ri are Mikan using this mission. Mikan, we see from here that if somebody brings a star, the Lakuchas or the Yasinim, Laitain in the Mazuyas. So, not like Taisa is just trying to compare. Mikan, this is the mocker. This din of get is the mocker that we do not tie the Mazuyas unless somebody comes forward. That's the D. The Ran, you remember the Ran and the Ramban, I mean, there are many different explanations, but the Ran and the Ramban both say, What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Isha is not the moment of the Baal. 
She doesn't, it's not a commodity that you do a financial transaction. She's an Ashusma, she's her own independent person. It's clear. What is the argument here by Gitin? That the, that the Ri learns that Gitin is the, is, is, is the opposite of Kedushin. And what's the whole idea of Kedushin? The financial deal. And then afterwards, everything's dragged along. So Mela, what did they get to? It, undo, it undoes that financial arrangement. So it's just like any other star moment. And therefore, Mikan. From here, we learn out all study moment is the same thing. Like in the Mazuya. Mashenk in the Ran Rabban says that's not exactly, and that's not at all what a get is. The Kedushin is mainly for the Isr, and the money gets dragged along. So get is very different. It undoes that. It removes the Isr, and is very different than any other get moment. So we see that this is actually a machlek is between the Shon Fine. So now we have generally there's two things happening by Kedushin. Isur and Mammon. So which is, let's talk about, focus on the Isur. Well, the Shreem hold it's Isur, that's the primary objective of tradition. So what's Pshat? So when you do these three different Kinyonim, is the Pshat that she now becomes muted to you and the Tretzoy, the outcome is she's now also to the rest of the world. Is that what happens when you make this Kinyon? Or Faket? The purpose of this Kenyan is as the Lashon Yimur of Samachay, the Chavla Charine, that you need to aid in there because they make sure that she becomes usher to the rest of the world and Dechamele, she's muted to you. And in fact, that very question is a debate in Tesis that based on the base. If you look in Tesis, it seems quite clear that the Tesis is the same because the word Kedushin, the Gemara of the base has a whole discussion why in one place is Isha Niknis and the second page of Isha Mekadish, different words. So the Gemara said the word Kedushin is also law akuli amla kehegish. That's what Kedushin is. You're answering her on the entire world like hegish. So Tasha then asks. So when you use the word hare at li, what are you saying? She's also to me. What are you saying? So Tasha says no. That you're also lo oilam bishvili. But what's Tasha the first part saying here? That you're answering her to the world. That's what Mukadesh is. Kedushin is you're answering her to the world. But then Tesis says, no, that maybe Mikadesh means Mizumenes, Miduchedes, that you are now, you know, that we are now have a relationship. The Khamele, you're also on the rest of the world. So that's Mamish the Shakla Vitaria there in Tesis, uh, in, in Tesis the base on the base. So that's if we focus on the Isa. Now let's focus on the Kenyan. We learned that it's mainly a Kenyan. How does a Kenyan work? Every Kenyan. You make all kinds of kinyan. Generally, you know, any kinyan, any kinyan in commercial matters, whatever it is, what's the plot of the kinyan? Is the idea of a kinyan that this transaction I'm doing, I'm doing Hagba, I'm doing Meshikha, or Mesida, or whatever kinyan I'm doing, is the plot is that this object now is becoming mine? And with that Khamela, nobody else can take it. There are Ghanas that take it. Is that what happens when I affect the kinyan? Or is the plot? I'm answering this object on the whole world. I'm the only person left that can use it. It's mine. Sounds a bit eerie fairy, but we'll soon see that it's not so. To, to in paraphrase it, let's understand when you own something, you make a Kenyan, you make, you make, you take ownership. What shot you own something? I own this phone. What do you mean I own this phone? There's two ways of understanding I own this phone. One way of understanding is that I have exclusive use of this phone and nobody else. If they want to use it, they have to ask me permission. If they don't, they're advantage. Why? Because I have exclusive use of this phone, which we call in the vernacular in the, uh, of the Shiva world, Shiva world, the use. That's what I had. The Kenyan that I make shows my Bala Batish guy that I'm the only one who can use this phone. The other way of learning is that no. That a Kenyan is far deeper than that. There's some kind of metaphysical relationship between me and this phone. When I make this Kenyan, the Tater prescribed to the Chachamim, gave us these Kenyanim. When I, what am I accomplishing when I make a Kenyan? That this very item is mine. Not just I have the right to use it. There's something deeper than that. You can't, it's not tangible. You cannot put it into words. The Shtamshus or the Etzim thing is mine. It's a Machlech is a Shayim. In Baba Kama, that Lama Baba base. The Gemara there says, Somebody went over and took his a machlekes. Unfortunately, what it means is I blew a shayf in his ear. I scared him or whatever. I gave him a smack. But I, I did something that I have to get penalized for. So I was penalized. And the Gemara works out exactly what the penalty is. It's a half a zuz. So the person, the victim, says, 
A half a zuz. Palvin a zuz and light beina. What do I need it for? You know what? Ezel the Ezel I donate this half a zuz to the poor. Five minutes later, hold it, Amri. No, 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 beina. Palvin, I need the half a zuz. I need to, I don't know, have a cold drink. I want to change my mind. Comes along Rabbi Yisim and says, no, no, no. Too late. The other malay, the poor people already was zaychid. Shanan yad aniim anan. We are the. I represent the aniim. There's a long riff, a long riff on that gemara, which is not common to have the riff make the pull on the gemara. But there's a long riff on that gemara, the flam of all the days, beginning of Shoshanogach, and there's a whole discussion there. I won't go through the whole discussion, but the Baal Hamoyer there says he disagrees with the riff, and the Baal Hamoyer says the riff quotes a gemara about. Um, Rabbi Eichelen, uh, Rabbi Eichelen said that, that if Gaza of Alain is Yash, if Gaza of Alain is Yash, if let's say Ruben stole from Shimon and Shimon did not abandon hope yet of recovering it, neither of them have the ability to make it Hegdish. Neither of them have the ability to make it Hegdish. It's not his number. Says the Balamoy, that's only if the Ganif is not prepared to give it back. But the moment the Ganif says, I am happy to give it back to you, even though it's still sitting in the Ganif's house, the Nigzel can go ahead and make it hectish. That's what the Baal Moir says. Come along and Aban says, To me, a Musa, Muhammad Hashem. To me, a Musa. How can you make it hectish? This Kinyonim, you know that a Gazan works with a Gazan has to make it, or a Gazan has to make a Kinyonim in order to be considered a Ganif. And therefore, just because he agreed to give it back to you, so what? But you don't stand your shoes. You don't have it. It's by them. So the Masek is here is exactly that. According to the Balamur, the moment that person says, I will give it back to you and I will no longer use it, it's back to you. Why? Because the whole Balabatashkai that you have is the use of it. And the moment that nobody else can use it, it's mine. And since the Ganif who had it right now said, I will no longer use it, nobody else can use it, and then it's yours. But the Baal, but the Ramban says no, that, I, that you have to have a Kenyan because it's something much deeper than just Ishtamshus. And since the Ganif has Kenyanim in it and he didn't give it up yet, the Etzim doesn't belong to you. So that is the Machlekes. And we go further. There's a, there's a Yisraeli Machlekes, I'm sure you heard of, I'll just give you a few little references. When something is Asr Bahana, if something that I cannot use, Chomets on Pesach, it, is it still mine? What happens if somebody, I did not sell my, my, my whiskey in my closet on Pesach and somebody comes to my house and steals all the bottles? Are they a Ghana? Is it really mine? How do we understand these Suri Hanoi? This is actually a big machlek as we show you. In Gemara Sukkah, in the Gemara Sukkah, in the third page, the Gemara says in the mission there that, that, that an Essig shall orla if you have an esrig, and the esrig is from the first three years of a fruit growing tree, a fruit tree which you know there's osr ba'achila and osr ba'hana, and you're not yaitzah. Why aren't you yaitzah? So the Gemara of Lamed Hay says there are two opinions. Either she'en la heter achila, if you can't eat it, so it's not mochem, l'kach the mochem, and the other one says she'en la din mamen, e'en la din mamen. Rashi says the ain't like din mamen, it has no din mamen. So Rashi basically says, since it's not worth anything, it's not called lachem. The Ravid spells it out even further. The Ravid is on that chav test in the base. The Ravid says, loy shava meeting, and therefore, uman de gozel mine, loy nikri gozel. That if something is also bahano, another person come and take it. So how is that lachem? That's why you're not going to ask show Allah. And other shame like again. The ritva himself comes out very strong against it. And he says, just because my shabu lay midday, he still he said, Yesh loy is chuz bedava. These are the words he uses, and it's important to come back in a minute. Yesh loy is chuz bedava. He has a schus in it. And therefore, man the gazel, nikl gazel. If you steal it, you are a gazel. Clear, a machlek is what Isuri Hano is. The Isuri Hano still belongs to you or it doesn't belong to you. We have in the Dharm Dr. Hay, a very, okay, it's going to like, I won't go through the whole thing. So you have Dr. Hay, this a discussion. What time do you have to finish? <laughs> Come on, tell me what time to finish.
Hej. <laughs> okay, so I'm going too long, Tom. In the Gemara, hey, hey, in the garden, there's a sugi as follows. A person said that I'm going to ban all the trumah to kain. I don't want any kain to have my trumah. No kain. Says the Gemara. It's a mission, actually. Says the mission that the kain can come and take it away. Bal Why? The Gemara explains. Why? The Rabbi comes along and explains. Why? You know why? Because when in my truma, what do I own already? Truma doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the Kayan, right? If you take it away from the Kayan, it's called Gezel Sheva. You're stealing from the Samayim. What I have in the truma is called Tevis Hano. That, and those who hold Tevis Hano as moments, so it's worth something. That Hano that I can choose which Kayan to give it to is worth something. As, as you know, he says it, that a, a grandfather whose grandson is a Kayan would go, how much would they pay you to so give it to my grandson because his daughter married a coin. <laughs> so, but now that I said I don't want to give it to any coin, I have no toivus hana. If I have no toivus hana, I have nothing. So the coin, you can come and take it. That's what the Gemara says. Says the right here, the Ram and, and the Rajba, they both say, from here we learn out that when something is asa bahana, Someone else can come take it. It's not yours anymore. It's clear. It's not yours. The interesting machlek is between the Ran and the Rajba is what happens if, because by a nedda, you can always go, go to, uh, to three, uh, three hadjages or to a rov and to be shayla on your which means that the Ghana took it and afterwards I go to it and then return it to me or once he has it, he has it. That's a machlek between them. That's a side issue. Then, however, the Namuka Yasev there and the Ritva there, they argue. They say, I'm afraid it's not. It's not. It's not. The Ghana said they take it from you. I will shut the Gemara. They say Truma is different because the Koyanim already have a first in your Truma. We call it Gezel Shevet if you don't give it. They have, the Koyanim have a right since you, you lost all your rights. So who's is it now? It belongs to the Koyanim. But Sam, in the Veltarine, if I make something Asabana or comes Pesach, what right do you have to come and take it? I, my first is still in there. Clear what the Machlech is, is as follows. If, I mean, other Gemara's as well, we'll go through more. If all I have is Ishtamsh, the right to use it. If it's Asabana, I no longer have the right to use it. So with what is it mine? It's no longer Lechem, no longer Shaloi. But if you learn that shot of, of, of Bailasi, that I actually have a Kenyan, that there's something, the etzim of the thing belongs to me. Okay, I can't use it. There's a law that says I can't use it. How did I lose it? It's still mine. Nothing changed. It's still mine. Interesting, the Alta Reb and Toflam and Heiko Zachran seems to learn somewhere in between the two. So I told you before that the Ritva and those who are showing him that say that Isa no still belongs to you, the word they say is that Taker has no value, but still, yes, lois chusbega. But the Dabra was there. The Alta Reb and Toflam and Heiko Zachran Bey says, he says, when you're a Osabano, Eino Hefker Gomur, it's like a part hefker. It's not a complete it's not a hefker. It's not a hefker gomer. It's not a complete hefker. And then he says that I will aim this chus with that. And the Alter Rebbe says, but somebody cannot steal it. They cannot steal it because ain't a hefker gomer. But the owner has no chus in it. Sort of in between the rishonim here, whether it's hefker mamish like nothing, or it's you're still there. So you have to really understand the Alter Rebbe Shita. So now, what exactly should does Rashi? Rashi says in Sukkot of Lamed Hayyam and Aleph, he says that what? That since it's not, doesn't have any value, ain't no din moment, orla, ain't no lechem. But he, what do you mean, why not lechem? So the Achreim all want to use a different Rashi, which I don't want to go into it. That I know day is about a borrowed Sukkot where Rashi comes up with the idea that if you don't have a Shabbat Pruta, Maybe you're not yet to the mitzvah, and therefore, if everybody can join and own one sukkah together, it must be that it's borrowed. One person owns it, and everyone's borrowing it because if everyone has a share in it, everyone has less than a shavu pruta. So the achreini want to say that maybe that's what Rashi means here because it's arla, it doesn't have a shavu pruta. That's why it's not lechem, not because it's not yours. But the mitzvah chinuch shows that can't be pshat in Rashi because how come nowhere in shulchan aruch 
if there's an opinion that says that any mitzvah you do has to have the value of Shabbat Purim. There's no such din anywhere. Why not? If Rashi says so and, 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 and so on. But apart from that, is that Rashi in Psachin Avavam Abeis? Rashi says in Psachin Avavam Abeis, Amr Ablah the Shnei Dvar Yim Einim Meshusah Shaladim. There are two things that are not in the shus of a person. But asana kasan tiyel b'shusay. But the tater made as if it's yours. Boy b'shusay rabim. The chametz m'shay shalshal ma'ila. So Rashi says it's clear. Ain't a b'shusay shaladim. We know exactly what that means. Rashi says ain't a b'shusay, ain't a shalom. What does Rashi want to add with those two words? It would seem the pasht is that Rashi is trying to say that, that now that it's asana, it's not yours anymore. There's nothing there. So if Rashi learns that isur hano means it's no longer yours. That means Rashi's shit is that the bilus is ishtamshus. And all I have is the use of it, the fruits of use of now. No, I don't have anything. Okay. So if we learn that Kenyan means the etzin, there's no question that a Kenyan makes it mine. If you learn that it's ishtamshus, there are two ways of learning. What's pshat? Every Kenyan you make because of ishtamshus, I can use it. Is the pshat? I make the Kenyan so I have exclusive use of it and everybody else therefore can't use it. Or the purpose of my Kenyan is to ask it everybody else, and therefore it's mine. If it's a Metsiya, to ask it the whole world. If it belonged to somebody, to ask it this person, and now it's mine. What's, how do we understand? Look at Rashi. Fascinating Rashi's. One Rashi is in Gitten, in the Flamid. Mishnah says over there that if somebody is in Malva, if somebody in Malva, it's a Koyin, it's a Levi, it's a Oni. You let money to a Koyin, to a Levi, and they absconded. You can't find them, and they owe you a lot of money. How do you get paid? So the mission says, Matri Shalayan, what you do is the following. This is the remedy. You, you, you set aside the truma, and you have in mind that you gave it to that coin, and then he gave it back to you, and you sell it, and with that money, you reimburse yourself. That's what the mission says. So you more to ask, Afagab the Layosi Liyode, even though it didn't come uh, reach the hands of, of this Koyin or lady, how did it become Truma? And, and okay, Truma, you use it, but how did it become that Koyin that he gave it back to you? And and my said, how did it become the ladies or the only how did it become my said only? You might give the three answers. Also, in or the but Ram says, the Koyin that you are familiar with. In other words, this Koyin that you got number two. And so, there's over here, and so. So Rashi says that all the Koyinim in the world know that this is the Koyin who's going to receive it. And because all the Koyinim in the world know that this is the Koyin that is going to receive it, Kulan Ascha Datayu, they all gave up hope or abandoned hope of getting this through Umemela Havishulu, and therefore becomes the Koyins. What does that mean? Because all the other Kainim said, well, okay, we're not going to get it. Therefore, the question still remains. How did it become the Kayans? He's not around. He absconded. The only way to understand Shadrashi is that the idea of the Kenyan is you ask the whole world, I'm the only person left that I can use it. So that's mine. And that's exactly what Ashi is saying here. Because Truma only belongs to Kainim. And since all the other Kainim were seeing that so they are not going to have it, therefore, automatically it becomes this Kayans. One other Rashi is in Babatsi that you know. Babatsi Omar Omar a shlok is Mishum Abba Karn Bagla. The shlok says name Abba Karn Bagla Arba Amish shall Adam Koinus Lay Bechol Mokum. Every person has four Amish, and what has the whole Shak Vataya in Sri Saladim as well, or just the Simka. <clears throat> but Arba Amish is Koinu. Very simple. So the Rabbana made a special Takana by a Mitsia. There shouldn't be arguments. Whoever is there first in those four Amish. It belongs to that person. Very simple. You don't even need a Rashi for that. But there is a Rashi. And Rashi says the following words. Im yesh the voice of David Hefkin. If where you're standing around you, there's an object that's Hefkin. Ain achar ashoy l'toysen. Nobody else can take it. What's Rashi saying here? We all know what a Kenyan is. A Kenyan means it belongs to you. And obviously it belongs to you. Nobody else can take it. What does Rashi even want? So if you look at all the Akhrainim, they all say the same thing in Rashi. They say, and Rashi is trying to say that four Amas doesn't mean you're standing in the middle and you have two Amas all around you. It means that, see, voices of Hefka, they have four Amas in all directions. So it's really eight Amas, eight square. That's what they all want to say in Rashi. But, but why would Rashi say, ain't Akhara Shoyal Toysha? That part is irrelevant. All you have to say is, im yes, see, voices of Hefka, you'll have their Pshetu. 
it's clear what Rashi is not trying to tell us is not what the result of it. We all know what a Kenyan is. Rashi is telling us how a Kenyan works. And he, since it's a Takan of the Chachamim, he's telling us that the Takan of the Chachamim works exactly the way Kenyan and the Raisa work. And that is that ain't Achar That's what the Kenyan does. And the moment the Kenyan does that, the Chachamim is mine. So now we go back to the first Rashi Kedushin. We said that Kedushin has in it two Inyanim. There's a financial side and there's an Isa side or an Erva side. So Rashi says, you might think that this is a financial Kenyan like all other Kenyanim, but you ask it on the whole world and therefore becomes mine. So Rashi says, no. Over here is different because nobody else has, there's no Ishtam Shukhash, nobody else has any rights over here. And therefore says Rashi, here it's not Show you the rest of the world and therefore becomes mine. Here's Isha Nikna's Lebaila. Here, how, what the, how does the Kenyan operate, even though there's a financial side to it? But in this case here, I, I agree with those who hold that the Kenyan makes it mine. And then Ashi says, Because by Yavam, we know there's a concept called Yesh Zika. And according to some, it's Mahatayda, but the most is Midrabana, which means there's already ties between this woman who lost her husband and had no children. But there's already ties to that brother. In fact, you had the Gemara Saita just recently. The Gemara Saita said, you come back from the front. If a, if a woman, and her husband dies, no children, all the brothers come back from the front. Because each one, it's their wife until you sort out who it is. So you would think when it comes to Yvonne, maybe Taka the Kenyan there is to be Shailul, all the brothers. And therefore, she's his. So as Rashi know, even by Yvonne, because it's Alvedic Kedushin, and therefore, Rashi said, by Yavim, also, it's the, the Kenyan operate the same way, in a positive way, in a proactive way, you make, you make it yours, and therefore, he's also on the rest of the world. Okay, thank you very much.